Namaskar and a very warm welcome to everyone joined in today on our 46th Know Your Species, Know Your Zoo talk. This talk is being organized by the Central Zoo Authority, New Delhi, as part of the ongoing Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav. The Mahotsav is a 75-week-long celebration to commemorate 75 years of India's independence, which falls on the 15th of August 2022. The Central Zoo Authority is taking the celebration forward through a massive outreach campaign entitled Conservation to Coexistence, The People Connect. Under the helm of this campaign, we will be showcasing 75 conservation priority species and 75 zoos, highlighting one species and one zoo each week. <clears throat> Today, as India celebrates its 73rd Republic Day, the Mahotsav also completes 46 weeks since its, since its commencement on the 12th of March, 2021. The species in focus for this week is the Northern Pigtailed Macaque, and the zoo in focus for this week is the Aizwal Zoological Park. So joined in today to speak to us on the species is Dr. Dilip Chetri. Dr. Dilip is the head of the Primate Research and Conservation Division at Aryana, he is a primatologist with more than 27 years of experience in the conservation of primates in, from Northeast India. He has published over 48 research papers in national and international journals and has also co-authored co seven books on the primates of Northeast India. He is the vice chair of the IUCN SSE Primate Specialist Group and the executive member of the IUCN section on small apes. His areas of interest are in the are in the uh, are in primate ecology, conservation biology, training, and education. He will speak to us today more on the species in focus. So over to you, sir. <clears throat> Namaskar. Just I'll share my screen, then I'll start. Uh, the title of my talk is uh, Northern Pigtail Macaque and Status and Conservation. In this talk, I, I'll just briefly introduce with uh, what is the status of uh, this species in India. So if you could just put it in the presentation more. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, welcoming to India, the primates, uh, you know, in India, we have 24 species of primates and uh, uh, pigtail macaque is one of the primates found in India. Out of 24 species of primates in India, nine species of uh, macaques are there. Out of these nine species, uh, especially uh, restless macaque, bonnet and lion tail macaques are widely studied. Then other species are very less studied, or we can say these are most neglected species in terms of studies, in terms of funding, in terms of awareness also. So welcoming to Northeast, in Northeast uh, we've out of 11 species of primates, uh, we have six species of primates where uh, pigtail macaque is one of them. And this uh, pigtail macaque is also least studied. And in Northeast, uh, Assamese macaque, in Stumptail macaque, and a few studies are there, but not widely studied. Well, see, uh, welcoming to the global distribution of pigtail macaque in Asia, or in South Asia, we get, we get eight countries, mainly Bangladesh, Cambodia, China, I mean, India, especially in Northeast India, only we found then Laos, then Myanmar, Thailand, and Myanmar. So welcoming to Northeast India, I mean, they are widely um, distributed in seven states of Northeast India, Arunachal, Asham, uh, Meghalaya, Nagaland, Tirpura, and Manipur, Mizoram. But, you know, uh, but you no, know, the studies of primates, you know, since uh, 1994, Indo-West Primate Project have taken a very systematic study where I was part of that, uh, that project. And, and uh, to, uh, 1994 to 2002, we did a systemic study, the survey of the primates. During that survey, uh, the I mean, uh, we 
we encountered only uh, the pigtail only in 12, uh, 12 locations, 12 locations. Or we can see the pigtail macaque is very rare, rare in this space, uh, in this distribution range in India. As well as well, if you see this map, you know, the Brahmaputra, the river Brahmaputra is a barrier, barrier for the distribution of this species. That means we only found the pigtail macaque on the southern bank of Brahmaputra, river Brahmaputra. So the species also uh, is very less and uh, gradually the, the studies, I mean, the detailed studies are very less and very few papers or few sporadic uh, studies are still there. Uh, in India, um, we are very lucky to have uh, pigtail macaques in national park, wildlife sanctuaries, reserve forest, you know, and community areas, especially in Assam also, we, we have in some community areas we get in some of the uh, Nagaland as well as in some of other northern states. If you see the status of uh, pigtail macaques, they are vulnerable. You know, we are, we are, thanks there, but they are in large number. But if you, if it comes to India or South Asia, they are endangered. That means their number is less or, or they are going to be extinct in few years. And they are well protected and they are, they are in the schedule two in the Indian Wildlife Protection Act. So pigtail macaque as a, as a, I mean, primates, or we can see their social system and multi male, multi female social system. They live in large group guarded by alpha male. And in India, during our I mean survey, uh, we have found two to twenty seven individuals. But in in the Thailand or in China, uh, the group size is very very more, hundred and hundred and forty to hundred and fifty individuals. Uh, pigtails are arboreal. They mainly use the canopy, the dinel, and fujibos. They mainly eat or maximum parts of the diet is fruits. Then another very, I mean, uh, interesting characteristic of this species is the sexual swelling in the females in the breeding season, you know, and uh, the population in India is less than 1500, you know. Uh, so we are really worried about the, uh, the population of this species or about the status of this species. If you see uh, this uh, diagram, I know, the chart, you can see they use 92% of the canopy, canopy, and only 8%, they hardly, uh, we can say, they hardly use the ground, or whenever they need it, I mean, just they avoid the ground, or we can say they are mainly arboreal animals. So home range in some of the study we have seen that uh, the pigtail maker uses 83 to 347 hectares of land and the day range that means daily day, daily how much they travel early morning from the roosting tree to the sleeping tree or the next roosting tree around i mean 692 in some areas in some hilly state i mean two two kilometer 2.5 kilometer also they are ranging so if you come on the how they spend the daily day, the pigtail, you know, the maximum time they use in resting, that means 45%, followed by locomotion, then, then feedings, 24%, then groomings, then other activity. Other activities, I mean, it may be, it, it may be uh, any other socializing activities. So while coming to diet profile uh, or Already I said that they are fujibos, you know, in this uh, chart also we can see, you know, 65% of their food, of their diet is consist of food. Or we can say they are mainly one of the competitors of the Hulok given, you know, Hulok given, who is only the apes of India, they are also fujibos. And pigtail is also fujibos. That means these two species are gradually competing each other. So then it is followed by the animal matter. That means it may be spider, insect, sometimes it's a frog also, some of the uh, an, an egg of the birds, then leaf bird, seeds, stems, flower, and etc. 
Welcome to habitats in India. You know, we mainly found in tropical evergreen, semi evergreen forest, tropical wet evergreen, and most deciduous forest in India. In India, we mainly found in our study 80, 80 meter to 860 meter. But our but in other studies in other uh, countries, you know, their distribution were 15. 50 meter to 2000 meter at the attitude. So another very important thing of, of the pigtail macaque is that they are associated with a number of species, or if you take the primates also, seven species, I, I hardly in Northeast will get where prime, uh, where pigtail is there, maximum three, four species, or at the max seven species are there, like ferris leaf monkey, cave langur, then um, globe gibbon, Stumptail macaque, Assamese macaque, then the recess macaque, and slow alerts. We can say so where pigtail is there, so we'll get at least seven species of other primates if the habitat is good. Or we can also say the pigtail is, is the indicator species for this species. The other, you know, where pigtail is there, the other, you know, tiger, leopard, deer, I can say pig or, or lot of other species or we can say lot of uh, tiger as a charismatic species or elephant is a charismatic species also there so where pigtail is there other charismatic species also there so we we need to save this species so welcoming to this perspective you know mainly in northeast india you know the development activity in each state also i said all the development activities day to day is going on and gradually the habitat is increasing and other you know already we have said uh, they are arboreal you know the fragmentation of habitat you know by development or oil exploration or the road construction so this fragmentation of habitat leads to the, the trap or the population trap in some of the pockets in their distribution range then another very important thing is zoom cultivation or, or we can say shifting cultivation, which is well practiced in Northeast India. You know, before uh, the cycle is 10 to 15 years, the cycle is gradually reduced to three to four or three to five years. So the regeneration is very less. And this really, uh, there is a loss of uh, habitats for this macaque, or we can say for this pigtail. Then uh, in Northeastern, you know, there's a lot of uh, tea, ginger, and uh, tea cultivation or orange, even a lot of electric power developments is there. And all this leads to their threats to their habitat. Then still uh, logging have been banned. Still the logging is going in all of the Northeast. Then the big dams throughout the Northeast and all these dams are, uh, they are usually, or the logging, they usually harm to these pigtail habitats. So oil experience, I already said, then the coal, coal exploration in the Northeast India, in Nagaland, in Assam, you know, then sand mining, oil exploration throughout in Northeast, you know, they gradually uh, cut the forest and, and they do their exploration. There are a lot of coal mining, red, red hole mining is also that illegal mining is also going on. So all this leads to the destruction of the habitat of this species uh welcome the threats you know the hunting in northeast india you know this is most prevalent uh, species since uh, the pigtail macaques is the biggest among all the macaques and they are large size you know when when the the hunters you to see they go for meat when they see the big species they always hunt so this is the major threat. I think we can one of the major threat for Northeast India, especially uh, pigtail as well as other primate of Northeast India. Then welcoming, you know, current scenario. What is the current scenario of pigtail macaques? If you see, you know, the decreasing trend in the pigtail macaques. Uh, similarly, we have seen in the blue given also the, the, the population is decreasing. In 2019, we did uh, uh, one division, Bunduma Forest Division, where we did the survey of 20 reserve forests. You know, out of 20 reserve forests, we have found the given in 12 forests, 
but we have not encountered pigtail macaques you know maybe uh, pigtail macaques may be there but uh, it is very rare it is very rare perhaps uh, maybe it is it is very rare but in uh, i mean out of 20 you know from eight eight uh, rija forest already uh, there is a local extinction of the hulok gibbon i'm also afraid whether same same should not be happened to a pigtail macaque also so gradually you know the uh, population trend reserve for as well as the uh, private land you know in the private or community land they are also going for tea garden you know mini tea gardens then other 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 plantation also so there, gradually this habit the private land habitat is, is increasing increasing and there is no action plan not the government you know uh, i think the forest department should take the lead for formation action uh, conservation action plan or still we don't know the status of the actual status of the pigtail in the forest so still you know still we have a lot of information where pigtail is there pigtail is there in a lot of protected area you know in Asham, Arunachal, Meghala, all, all of north states but we know actually the number how, how, how many numbers are there maybe many more new new protectors are coming maybe pigtail is there well, they are, they are well protected in protected area. Maybe the fragment is also inside the same, same protected area also. So we, we need a lot of studies. So action needed, you know, uh, since uh, we, we did a survey long back in 1994, so a detailed population survey is urgently needed for stump tail, uh, sorry, for pig tail macaques, you know, throughout the distribution range or throughout the Northeast, uh, Northeast India. And uh, uh, ecological behavior study in Northeast India, uh, we have not seen any any research uh, taking pigtail macaques as a species for their PhD thesis or long term studies. So it need to be done. There are a lot of uh, uh, habitat restoration work uh, is needed. You know, is needed. I mean, fragmentation is there, or uh, we also need to some enrichment with the, with the habitat. And lot uh, lots of fragment fragmentation. You know where there's a trap population with the two kilometer or five kilometer uh, fragment uh, forest the population is there so we need to rescue them and translocate to to the other big habitat or we can say wild to wild translocation is needed and education awareness you know education awareness i already said you know as a macaque a bandar you know is a, a, they have been neglected especially the in northeast you know hollow gibbon and golden langur as well as the fairies leaf monkey these three species got i mean uh, some awareness uh, uh, some awareness of some sort of flexible species but the macaques have been neglected a lot of people don't know actually the status of this macaque even the forest department you know when they see the monkey uh, or the pigtail also they the bandar so this uh, i think mean, this awareness that the massive awareness should be there for the conservation, for the conservation of a uh, pigtail macaque as well as the other primate, primate in this region, then capacity building of forest staff. I already said, you know, uh, the capacity, especially uh, training, should be uh, done for the forest staff for the conservation of primate in general and pigtail in particular. You know, otherwise the forest uh, forest department will say, oh no. They always go for a big animal, you know, tiger, elephant, rhino in Asham. We always go for rhino. If there is one uh, one uh, very endangered species died, the primate, uh, hardly any any people will go there. So this capacity building training for the forest staff is needed so that the, at least the forest department or forest staff can know the value of the primate, the value of the species. Then only I think we can save the species. At the last, I think the community involvement. As you know, the fringe area people, they all, uh, these are the main uh, um, main people who can really conserve the species, conserve the forest, or for future generations. So these people should be aware, and these people should be taken in consideration for any planning for the conservation of the species, or pigtail, or any other species. Then only I think we can we can we can make pigtail uh, pigtail macaque safe in uh, northeast India. Thank you.
Right. Thank you so much, sir, for giving a brief overview of the species biology and the action, the needed and threats that it faces. So we will take question answers for this session at after the we have the zoo talk. So we now move on to the know your zoo talk. So sir, you can uh, stop sharing your screen now. Uh, so joined in with us to speak to us on the zoo is Mr. Lalun Zira, who is the officer in charge of the Aizwal Zoological Park. Mr. Lal is an IFS officer of the 2010 batch and has uh, he's a geologist by training and has uh, managed the operation and has managed operations pertaining to the welfare of forests and wildlife for over two decades now in the state of Mizoram and he will speak to us more today on the zoo. So over to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, can I share my screen now? Yes. <clears throat> Uh, so, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I will be talking about the brief uh, of about the uh, Aizol Zoological Park. Uh, as regard to the species, I am no expert, so Dr. Dilip has already spoken. I won't be speaking about the species. It's all about the Aizol Zoological Park. This is a brief uh, about Aizol Zoological Park. The location is approximately 15 kilometers away from the state capital Aizol on the western side. Geo coordinate is there. And the elevation, the hilly terrain is located approximately 450 meters above sea level. And the forest type consists of uh, Pachar tropical semi evergreen forest asper. Champion and shed. The area extent of Aizol Zoo is uh, written as 65 hectare in the management plan previously. But I suppose this is a mistake. When I joined the Aizol Zoological Park and did survey, actual survey, I found it, it is only 27 hectares. So immediately we propose for extension to the adjoining areas. Hopefully we'll be extending to the whole of uh, 65 hectare extent in the near future. Uh, I just display this uh, pinturo, which is iconic species in the zoo. Our zoo logo itself is based on this uh, particular animal. We have only one species male here. We don't have a partner. We've been looking for its partner, but till today, it's a futile attempt. This is the layout of Aizol Zoological Park. The red area indicated where the northern pigtail macaque is enclosed. A picture of a clouded leopard. This is uh, also in the zoo. For this species also, we have two males for quite some time without female. But fortunately or unfortunately, last year there was a infant rescue from the jungle where some people found a suckling baby of this species. We took it home. We nurture it. Now it has grown very big and it happens to be a female. So in the near future, we are hoping to have breeding on this species. The history of establishment of Aizol Zoological Park dated back, way back in 1970 when the whole of Mizo district was under the auspices of Assam State, the then district collector Sri A. C. Ray started small collection of animals for display as a personal collection. Then, in the year 1972, when Mizoram attained a UT, Union Territory, there was a children's park in the heart of Isol Town, and it was decided that all animals were shifted to children's park for display for those who ever visited the children's park. It was there for approximately five years. 
but the area was very small, congested, and, and not suitable for the animals at all. So another lookout was taken. There was a forest training school at the near outskirts of Aizul town. Near the forest training school, there was a land, uh, vacant land, which was uh, developed into a mini zoo. So in 1977, the then Lieutenant Governor Sri S. K. Chibar formally inaugurated the mini zoo at Bethlehem. Since then, collection of animals grow very fast. It's been there for quite some time. But then after some time, that area is also rather small and become congested. And with human population in the nearby vicinity, it was again decided to shift the zoo to elsewhere where they can have more space to move about, more, less of human interference. So a site was selected some 15 kilometers away from Aizol city. Construction establishment started since 2001 and completed by 2006. On 24th of November 2006, Sri Zoram Tanga, the Honorable Chief Minister of Mizoram, formally inaugurated the now present establishment at Lungver location near Aizol. It is categorized as small zoo by CZA. Present administration consists of one deputy conservator of forests, myself. I'm also looking after four wildlife sanctuaries along with Aizol Zoo. Then we have one assistant conservator of forests, range officer, forest guard two, office peon one, chokidar one. And most of our workers are provisional employees, 15 numbers of them. Having a distribution like a sweeper, animal feeder, what's security, gatekeeper, and all. Then from the state VT department side, we have one VT assistant sergeant deputed to the zoo. Uh, actually, we have one sanction post in the department for VT assistant sergeant. Presently, there was no recruitment in the future due to lack of recruitment rules. So presently, the state government is devising a new recruitment rules for VAS, which is available in the department. So hopefully we'll be having permanent VAS in the zoo. And who is also assisted by one VT field assistant. This is Tamtel Maka. We have four species of macaque in the zoo, stumptail macaque, Resas macaque, Assamese macaque, and our species of the week, northern pigtail macaque. These are some of the infrastructures available, not exhaustive, but uh, some of the shortlisted infrastructure. We have several buildings, offices, Visitors retiring sets, dispensary, feed store, post mortem, incinerator, interpretation center, one vehicle, Bolero Camper for range officer in charge. Then in the office, we have computer set and tranquilizer. Mr. Lal, are you with us? This is fitted with uh, CCTV, eight cameras presently. Uh, these are a list of uh, animals that we have in Aizol Zoo, totaling 28 species. Number of individuals is 201 total. Of these, 
19 species are mammals, 4 reptiles, and 5 bird species. Apart from this, we have some exotic life, exotic species of animals also. These are actually seized by the custom officials across the international border, crossing the international border, mainly from Myanmar side. So when the customs officials seize these exotic smuggled birds, there is nowhere else to keep them in safe custody except Isol Zoological Park. So under order of district, uh, district magistrate, all the seized animals are brought to Isol Zoo for safekeeping. It includes 21 number of species and total number of individual has risen to 248 numbers. One mammal species, a little monkey, uh, by the name Red Ear Gwenon. Then four species of reptiles, then 16 species of birds. So this is mainly what I can say about Isol Zoo. If there is any further inquiry or questions, I am ready to answer them. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for giving us a brief overview of the zoo and uh, the uh, the uh, collection that you have, the animal collection that is there. So we now move on to the question answer session for today's talk. So we'll take the questions for the species section first. So Dr. Dilip, the first question for you is that uh, pigtail, the traditionally the southern pig, the northern pigtail macaque was considered a subspecies uh, of the southern pigtail macaque. But it is now classified as an individual species. Is there any tax? Is there any conservation significance of this taxonomic split, and how does this impact the on-ground intense conservation? See, before it, it was a subspecies. Now it is upgraded. You know, when it is upgraded, it, it is it is a species. Then I think it gets a more focal a focal point, focus. You know, focus point for the conservation if if the government wants to upgrade some of the protected area some of the reserve forests to the national park or pas you know then i think uh, when there is a species and in india it is uh, i mean endangered if you see the number is uh, less than 1000 or less than 1500 that means if it is sub species then uh, we, we definitely know it is already in uh, other part of the countries or other part of the world you know Similarly, when the species, just like example in Bangladesh also, there was less species. So when it is an upgrade to species, it definitely gives more uh, uh, effort for for conservation, and the, it it is good that the, that the government can also take up for uh, declaring the more PAs. Thank you. All right, sir. Okay, and so the uh, next next question for you is that uh, within the groups that within, they form, uh, you mentioned that they may, uh, they form multi female and multi female groups. Are there any intergroup uh, aggressions that have been observed in studies done on them? Intergroup is some, sometimes you know, but uh, during our study, you now we also did some sort of studies, but we have not seen uh, aggressive, uh, totally uh, fierce uh, fighting. But generally, when one group approach, other group generally avoid. But some one in I think one instance only there's aggressive fighting between the males and males. Right, sir. And so the next question for you is that how is resource partitioning done between areas of overlap with the other seven primate species that you mentioned? You know, especially uh, uh, you know, uh, pigtail macaques and gibbon. They are Fuji boars, you know, but during our study, we have not seen the, they are competing to, uh, the close competition, you know, but otherwise, you know, cap language is uh, folly board. That means there's leaf eater. Then uh, stump tail is there. They are terrestrial. The rhesus monkey is there. Then Assam is also there. So gradually uh, the uh, canopy, you know, they separate by the canopy also. The gibbons and pigtail at the top. Then come Assamis. Then at the this uh, rhesus macaque, I mean, sometimes they're on the ground also. Sometimes they use the canopy also. 
then terrestrial is the uh, stump tail macaques. So gradually, uh, it, I mean, ecologically, we can say also they are being separated. Right, so and uh, so the next question for you is that several macaque species have been impacted by anthropogenic influences. How how is this species faring in the forests of northeast India? If you can shed some light on that, and how do the communities interact with the species? So especially in northeast India, you know the macaques. Uh, uh, if you take especially rhesus macaque, uh, we have lots, but this macaques is mainly they read the zoom. Jum cultivation, they read the I mean gardens, uh, they read the vegetable garden. So I think with the community, the relation is not good, to be very frankly, you know. Comparable with the gibbons, comparable with, with the uh cap langurs also. Even in Borajan, you know, during the paddy, paddy cultivation, you know, this pigtail maca you still go. And not only pigmen, other macaques. So the community, you know, they are, uh, I mean, conflict is there with the macaques, especially the macaques. I won't say the ten only, but with the macaques, there are a lot of conflict is there. Mainly, you know, in the races also, races is more in Ashams. But in the hilly state, the conflict is less, less. Since the, I mean, maybe some of the, uh, I mean, may, maybe due to uh, hunting also. And the, I mean, relation between community and the macaque species is not good. So we have to work out whether, whether we can mitigate uh, the relation, whether we can bring the good relation, whether the conflict between the farmers and the macaques can be reduced. Maybe we, we, it needs a lot of studies in Northeast India. In each state, and it, it should be a species wise also, you know, we, we cannot say this species is since uh, work for all the species of macaques. No, I think each species we need to study in throughout the northeast. Then only we can, we can make a conservation action plan for the mitigation of conflict. Thank you. Right, so, so those were the questions for you. We now move on to questions for the zoo. So, Mr. Lal, the first question for you is that uh, Usually, people connect to primates quite differently than any other species. How does, um, how do you think uh, this people, how can this people connect be used to make a positive impact on species conservation by zoo, by the zoo as such? Uh, as it appears from the uh, daily zoo visitors in the zoo, these primates are the main attractions actually. People love them. So with the with the coming of this uh, social media and cable TV, people have become more and more aware on the need for conservation anyway. So when they come to the zoo and see the primates, the monkeys in action, they are more acquainted with their nature. So slowly bit by bit this awareness for conservation is growing among the general public without anybody saying anything also we don't have to conduct awareness campaign specifically also this is what i notice nowadays in the general public right so and uh, so the next question for you is that uh... Does the zoo have any plans to include and incorporate other unique fauna from the forests of Northeast India into their collection? Is that any, is that part of your future plans? No, uh, no not presently. Uh, do you mean for the same species? No, other no, no, species. No. It just, it just says that, do you have plans to include and incorporate the unique fauna from the forests of Northeast India also into the exhibits of his? Ah, no, not presently. All right. Okay. So, so I think those were the questions for you and uh, we do not have any uh, further questions. So with that, we come to an end to our 46 Know Your Species, Know Your Zoo talk. So on behalf of the Central Zoo Authority, I would like to thank you both, uh, Dr. Dilip Chetri and to you, Mr. Lal uh, Lalan Zirat, for taking time out of your busy schedule and joining us for this 46 Know Your Species, Know Your Zoo talk on the 73rd Republic Day of India. 
And um, I would also like to thank the audience for being with us throughout this session and would like to inform them that Aizwal's Logical Park will be continuing the outreach activities till the end of this week. So if you are in Aizwal, do, do uh, take part in the outreach activities that they have planned. And we will be back next week from 4 to 5 p.m. on Wednesday with our, 47, no, uh, with our 47th Know Your Species, Know Your Zoodog. So thank you so much and Namaskar. Thank you, ma'am.